Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Environmental Science, video 30. It's on water pollution. Water pollution made headlines in 1969 when the Cuyahoga River in Ohio started on fire. This is not that fire. This is a picture of an earlier fire. In fact, the Cuyahoga River had started on fire many times going way back into the 1800s. But this caught people's attention. The idea that water could catch fire, it wasn't the water itself that was burning, but led to regulation to clean up water. And this is the Cuyahoga River today. It's cleaned up. The job's not done yet. But water pollution is anything that decreases the water quality of lakes, streams, rivers, things like that. And so we categorize water pollution depending on where the pollutants are coming from. Point pollution would be coming out of one pipe or one uh, ship, for example. We can have non-point, that's coming from, for example, all of the farmer's field in an area. And then we can have groundwater pollution. So it's in that water table underneath the ground itself. The major pollutant is going to be wastewater. This is animal and human waste. And so that waste has to be broken down. And we generally do that using bacteria. And as the bacteria break down the waste, they require oxygen to do that. And we can measure how polluted that wastewater is by looking at what's called the biochemical oxygen demand. How much oxygen are these bacteria requiring? Now as they do this, they pull oxygen out of the surrounding material and can lead to dead zones. We see this along a lot of the coasts in, in the U.S. We also get an increase in nutrients in that area, and so you'll get eutrophication. So we get a bloom of algae producers in that area. And then also wastewater carries disease from one area to another. Cholera is a great example of that. It's not only wastewater that can lead to pollution. We can also have chemicals like metals, acids, synthetic material like pesticides and oil. And then we have non chemical, not at the molecule level. So example could be garbage that's found, a sediment that's found, or even heat can lead to water pollution. And so we've cleaned that up. We have the Clean Water Act. We have the Safe Drinking Water Act as well. And so how do we clean up that water through technology? So we could use a septic system, uh, a municipal sewage system, and then we can treat our water as well. And so the categories of water pollution, we can have point pollution. This is an example of that. We've got a sewer coming right out of a pipe into a river. Um, we can have non-point source. This could be all the water washing over farmer's fields, pulling pesticides and nutrients into the water supply. And then we can have groundwater pollution. So in this case, we've got a latrine over here, and so the human waste is going to move down underneath the ground into the water and you can see their well is right here so you can get contamination like that. And so the major pollutant is human wastewater or sewage and so this person is testing the water here. What happens is that waste is broken down by bacteria, decomposing bacteria like E. coli, but to break it down they require dissolved oxygen just like you do as you breathe. And so we can look at the amount of oxygen that's being consumed and that tells us how much waste there is. And so we use a, a, a standard called the bio chemical oxygen demand. What you do is you measure how much oxygen is being produced by these decomposers. Our standard is how many milligrams of oxygen, dissolved oxygen per liter, is used over five days at around room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. And so if we were to take a pristine river, its BOD is going to be less than one milligram per liter. But if we're looking at a polluted river, it's going to be a much higher amount. If we look at sewage, treated sewage, it's going to be 20 milligrams per liter. But if we look at raw sewage, in the US it's around 200 and if we look at it in Europe it's going to be around 600. Now you may think why do they have more polluted sewage? It doesn't have anything to do with the waste. It's that in the US we produce so much water, take so many long showers, flush the toilet and so as we do that we're diluting these BOD numbers. Now it also leads to increases in nutrients and eutrophication. So this is pollution leading to an algae bloom. We have a bunch of blue-green algae that are using the nutrients in it and so you get a huge explosion of growth. You might think this is a good thing, but what happens, this is an algae bloom off the coast of California. And so as you get an algae bloom like this, there's a bunch of producers algae in that area, but then they eventually die. And as they die, these same decomposers are going to break it down. And as they do that, they pull oxygen out of the water. And so we're producing what are called dead zones. This is a massive dead zone around the size of Rhode Island in the Gulf of Mexico. And what we're doing is pulling the oxygen out of the water. And so fish are dying, shellfish are 
dying. And you can see that we have dead zones all around our planet, but it's going to be aggregated in areas where the water is moving out into the ocean with huge amounts of nutrients. So we have this eutrophication and then these dead zones are being created. Also in that, that polluted water, we have disease. And so in India, you can see here that they're washing themselves in the water, but we also have wastewater in there as well. And sometimes we're pulling the drinking water out of there, and so it can lead to disease. Cholera outbreaks in India or in South America are awful, but it's a bacteria that's moving into the wastewater and then we're drinking it back in. And so there's so many diseases that can be found in water. And so scientists use an indicator species like E. coli or fecal coliform numbers, and we can see if that's found in the water, then we're going to find other diseases there as well. Now, aside from wastewater, we can have chemical pollutants. This is a big ash spill, and we're moving a lot of chemicals into the water itself, like lead, arsenic, and mercury. Generally, these things are going to be found underneath the earth, but with mining, we're moving them up and they're getting into the water. We also have that same problem with acids. So, acid main mine drainage is being released, but it used to be trapped underneath the earth. We also have synthetics that we're producing, like pesticides and and then finally oil, we're pumping it underneath the earth, but now it can contaminate with any kind of an oil spill. We can also have non-chemical pollutants, and so this is a pretty sad picture. This is an albatross chick, and its mother was feeding it, and father were feeding it um, debris, marine debris. They just thought it was food, and eventually the chicks are dying as a result of that. But it can also be sediment, dirt. So this is a construction zone, and a lot of that dissolved sediment is moving into the water supply. And then finally, it can be heat. And so at this power plant, as a result of that combustion, we're moving a lot of that heat and that's impacting the uh, environments as well. And so we've been re regulating this since the 1970s. And so the most famous one is the Clean Water Act, but we also have the Safe Water Drinking Act. And what they do is they put regulations on the amount of pollutants that can be moved into the water supply, standards as far as water pollution. So how do we clean it up? We can use something like a septic system to treat our sewage. So the sewage moves in here, then you'll get a lot of the sediment settle out and the scum will be on the surface and then what you have is bacteria this whole way that are working on it and so they're moving it out into a drain field and the bacteria are breaking that down now the problem is if it, some of it gets out of the septic system or the septic system fills up we can get leaching it moves down into the groundwater this is a sewage treatment plant in Europe and so the parts of sewage treatment are pretty simple first of all you'll get pretreatment where we're moving things like big bits of garbage out of it and we're treating it with a little bit of oxygen but then generally you have a primary treatment and so in this case what you're doing is you're letting a lot of that sediment settle out and that's going to take one pathway where we digest it further dry it out and lots of times it moves to a landfill but then we have these big tanks where we're aerating it and so what you're doing is bubbling oxygen into it so these decomposing bacteria can break down that waste and eventually it's going to move into the water supply maybe back out into a river once we've hit the right BOD level. After it comes into the river, then somebody downstream is going to have to treat that water. And so we also have water purification. In that, we're going to have big filters. We're also going to treat it chemically. We'll treat it with uh, chlorine, for example. But the big problem with this is that we're removing um, the water upstream and dropping sewer downstream, but then there's going to be another city just down the way. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in the blanks? Let me do it for you. Water pollution decreases water quality. It could be point, non-point, or ground uh, groundwater contamination. The pollutants, the major one is going to be the wastewater. We can measure that using the BOD, but it can lead to dead zones and also cultural eutrophication, these explosions of algae. Um, we also have chemicals like metals, acid, synthetics that we produce in oil. We have solid waste, sediment, and then remember thermal pollution. How do we clean it up? Through regulation and technology, septic systems, water purification, and then sewage treatment. So that's water pollution. It's awful, but I hope that was helpful.